from Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. It's Ohio State football. Today, the Ohio State Buckeyes battle the Badgers of Wisconsin. Hello, everybody. This is Jack Kramer along with Paul Warfield, and we're delighted you could join us for all the exciting action as the Buckeyes today complete their 1990 road schedule. The Wisconsin Badgers provide the opposition, Paul. It's a team that's winless in the Big Ten coming into the game today. It's a team that's sandwiched between Iowa and Michigan in Ohio State's schedule. A team the Buckeyes might have a tendency to overlook, but simply cannot afford to. Well, I certainly would agree with that, Jack. The Buckeyes cannot afford to overlook this team and look ahead to next week, nor can they look back to last week's big win over Iowa. Wisconsin is right here today, and these are tough games to play against teams that you're expected to beat. The Badgers are coming into this ballgame with nothing to lose and everything to gain, and so Ohio State will have to be on their toes. Buckeyes played pretty well defensively against Iowa, but went in reverse in offense. Offensively, I believe they're going to have to reestablish that run game. They did not do a good job of advancing the ball on the ground. Uh, they've proven to all the teams in the Big Ten, most of the teams at least, that they can throw against anyone, but they've got to reestablish the run. Defensively for Ohio State, a big change among the starters today. Well, Alonzo Spellman, who's been very, very effective in recent weeks, is a little bit gimpy. He sprained an ankle against Iowa last week, stayed in there, and helped the team through that big victory. It's a little bit of a question, Mike. We'll have to keep our eyes open to see whether he's going to be able to help this Buckeye team today. Well, the Buckeyes have won 43 of 59 games in this series, including one stretch when they won 21 in a row. However, Wisconsin's won five of the last nine. We're seconds away from the kickoff of today's game between Ohio State and Wisconsin. From all the states in more than 100 countries, they come to Ohio State. They come to study in nearly every conceivable academic area. More than seven... Your phone call leading to the arrest and indictment of a criminal in Wood County can earn you up to $1,000 reward, and your participation will be kept totally confidential. If you think you have information about a crime in Wood County, be a Crime Stopper. Don't delay. Phone your tip now to 352-0077. This is WBGU-TV, Channel 27, Bowling Green, Ohio. Temperature in the upper 40s, slight wind out of the north, bright blue skies overhead as John Cooper's Ohio State Buckeyes prepare to take on Barry Alvarez's Wisconsin Badgers. Coach Alvarez, Paul, in his first year as a head coach, Came over from Notre Dame and the staff of Lou Holtz, known as a defensive strategist. And that is exactly where he's trying to build this University of Wisconsin football team from the defensive side, first of all. A sparse crowd on hand here at Camp Randall Stadium, which seats nearly 78,000. Ohio State will receive the opening kickoff. Badgers won the toss, elected to defer choice until the start of the second half of this game. Rich Thompson preparing to kick off for the Badgers. He'll have a slight wind at his back. Buckeyes back deep. Have on the far side Robert Smith, Dante Lee on the near side. Smith from the 12. And he surges to the 32, and from that point, the Buckeyes will start first and 10. Tyrone Mahone made the tackle for the Badgers. Kick off by Wisconsin's Thompson. So Greg Fry coming off a three touchdown performance a week ago through the year is at the helm of the Buckeye offensive unit. Scotty Graham and Robert Smith start behind Fry. Jeff Graham in motion. First play for the Buckeyes. Scotty Graham over left guard. Stubborn run by Graham, who churned out about five. He was met at the point of attack by Dan Davey. Roy Nichols, Lynn Hartman, Dan Beatty at center, John Peterson, Mick Schoep, and Gary Lipovic at the tight end. That's the offensive line for the Buckeyes and the receivers in backfield. Greg Fry, quarterback, Scott Graham, Robert Smith, Bobby Olive at one receiver, and Jeff Graham at the other receiver. That dynamic duo. Raymond Harris nursing a knee injury. Does not start today, but is in now. Play action, Fry to pitch it, airs it out long, intended for Olive down around the 22 far. Bobby Olive has earned the nickname Mr. Dependable or Mr. Reliable from us, Paul, but he could not catch up with that one. 
Badgers defensively. Don Davey, Lamarck Chackerford, and Dan Batch across the front. Malvin Hunter, Gary Casper, Brendan Lynch, and Kurt Maternowski, your linebackers. Greg Thomas, Scott Nelson, Eddie Fletcher, and Troy Vincent, who returned to putt for a touchdown against Ohio State last year. Man the secondary for Wisconsin. Robert Smith is checked back in. Greg Fry and the Buckeyes confronted with third and five. Ryan Stabline split far left out of your picture. Fry is dragged down as he throws short of Graham at the 42. Now Greg Fry saw that scene all too much last week against Iowa, Paul. Fine defensive pressure led by Dan Batch of the Badgers. Greg Fry from the split backfield is dropping back, looking downfield. He has to move up into the pocket because number 94 is right around his ankle. Dan Batch, as you said, Jack came very quick and hard. A lot of pressure on the play. Vincent back at his 20 to take the punt from Bowman, who had a fine week against Iowa last Saturday. This one coming up short, but getting a good roll for the Buckeyes, trickling inside the 20. And the Buckeyes continue to fan the football, which finally rests at the 16. Well, Jeff Bowman running off the field after another fine punt, but again in that first series, Jack, we're going to, those are Bowman's statistics for the year. Nice fat 42.4 yards uh, per punt, but we're going to have to go back to last week when the Buckeye offensive line was not able to hold out that hard-charging Iowa line, and that time... Alan Klein had a little bit of trouble with Dan Batch as he applied pressure on Greg Fine. Tony Lowry, the Wisconsin quarterback, he hails from the Columbus, Ohio area, played his high school football at Groveport, Madison. 6'3", rangy signal caller. Robert Williams tries to turn the corner. The football's loose. Buckeyes pick it up and run it into the end zone for a touchdown. Vincent Clark scampers home. Six points, Ohio State. And the football will be brought back out to the 15. The officials are ruling that you cannot advance the fumble, fumble that is across the line of scrimmage. It's not that, really, but Lowry takes the handoff and hands it off to Robert Williams, who was hit by Tovar and also hit the... Uh, on the play, he hit hard, and Benny Clark really Johnny on the spot and picks up that loose ball and takes it in the end zone. Lowry takes the handoff, the snap rather, and gives it to Williams. Williams hit by Toolbar and Greg Smith. The ball pops loose. Benny Clark picks it up and takes it in the end zone, but the officials rule that the ball will be brought back and it's dead at the 15-yard line. Ohio State will take over at that point. Simply put, Paul, Benny Clark would have had to have Caught that ball in midair to have advanced it downfield. Of course, the exception to that would be if the fumble occurred by the tailback beyond the line of scrimmage. And specifically in that case, it was a sweep to the left. Williams coughed it up a little behind the line of scrimmage. So the Buckeyes thought they had six points, but... The new rule is invoked. Or I should say the new rule was not invoked in that situation because the fumble occurred just behind the line of scrimmage. But the Buckeyes still have the football. Just a minute, 19 seconds into this game, an ideal position on the gridiron at the 15 of Wisconsin. Because John Cooper on the sidelines getting an explanation, uh, making sure that uh, the officials are ruling appropriately on this play. Apparently there is a discrepancy on the scoreboard with the official clock and it's being wound down closer to 13 minutes. Well, Barry Alvarez, Wisconsin Badgers, Paul, come into the game minus seven in the turnover takeaway department. Now minus eight with an early fumble. John Cooper's Buckeyes have been living well in this regard over the past few weeks. In fact, the Buckeyes haven't lost a fumble in four weeks themselves, so... These two teams are going in reverse in the turnover takeaway department. I believe that the Badgers are, what, minus five in the turnovers uh, department, the uh, giveaway takeaway? Minus 
seven coming minus into seven coming into the game. And the uh, Buckeyes, of course, are on the positive side, and so Ohio State showing that uh, uh, it is an opportunistic football club gets the football in uh, extremely fine field position. Puts a lot of pressure on Wisconsin right from the start, but uh, Buckeyes have had the capacity to take advantage of these situations, and we'll see what they do in this particular series. Well, it's important against a team like Wisconsin for the Buckeyes to start delivering that knockout punch early, and they've got a chance to do it with a first and 10 from the 15. Clock is set at 13.45 in the first period. Robert Smith barges through a big hole. He carved out about nine yards to the six. Brendan Lynch was the man who nudged Smith to the ground. Mahone helped him. Robert Smith needed less than 20 yards, 18 to be exact, coming into this game to set the all-time freshman rushing record at Ohio State, topping Archie Griffin. So Robert Smith still several yards away. Scotty Graham gets the call here. He's got the first down. Graham bounced to the turf at about the three and a half. It'll be first and goal for Ohio State. Buckeyes trying to capitalize early on the Wisconsin miscue. Badgers turned it over on their first play from scrimmage. William Houston has checked in for Ohio State at fullback. Robert Smith behind him. Graham on the sideline at the moment. A little over two minutes into this game. Buckeyes threatening inside the Wisconsin five. This is Robert Smith hopping to about the two. He got one of the three yards needed for the touchdown. Wisconsin defensively, Paul, has played very well the last several weeks. In fact, they limited Iowa to just 12 points for three quarters plus. Indiana had just 13 well into the fourth quarter a week ago. Robert Smith trotting off the field. Didn't get very much yardage on that play. Jack, he was running behind John Peterson. And Jason Winrow picked up a yard or two in there. As you said, Wisconsin is tough down there when you're knocking on their door. Goal to go from the two. Fry wants to throw it through the hands in the flat of Likovich. Likovich reached up to Spirit. But Fry zipped it off Likovich's fingertips. And the Buckeyes are now confronted with third and goal from the two. It appeared to be a catchable ball, but as you said, Jack, Fry threw it with uh, maybe a little bit more velocity than he needed because it was a relatively short pass. And also, Likovic is looking back into a very strong sun that went on the field. Crucial play early in this ball game. Badgers would get a victory of sorts if they could force an Ohio State field goal. But this is Raymond Harris pounding to the goal line. Did he get in? I don't believe so. His forward progress was stopped just short. Wisconsin fans on their feet. The Badgers who stuffed the play at the one foot line are on their feet. Raymond Harris taking this pitch, running behind, solid blocking, and Raymond is stopped right at the goal line. He does not penetrate or cross, breaking the plane. Raymond Harris again running behind Scott Graham. But a couple of Wisconsin defenders are there to repel him, and the Buckeyes are going to go for it. Buckeyes disdain the field goal try. They're going for six. Fry keeping. He coughs it up. Wisconsin's got it back at the three. Number six, Tyrone Mahone scooped it up as Fry tried the option and had it stripped away from him, and Wisconsin gets a reprieve, dodging a bullet here in the first few minutes. Greg Fry will fake it to Scott Graham, option down the line, but he is bumped immediately with a very solid tackle by Greg Thomas. The ball comes loose as Fry tries to flip it back, and Tyrone Mahone right there on the spot. Fry trying to deliver the ball, pitch it back, a switch to Raymond Harris. Not a very good job. Wisconsin does an outstanding job and a moral victory, as you said, Jack, for the Badgers. Penalty markers, whistles on Wisconsin's second play from scrimmage this afternoon. Tight end Dave Zeck was moving. And that's the indication from 
referee John Nealon. Barry Alvarez in bewilderment as his Badgers continue to make mistakes. Well, offensively, this Wisconsin Badger football team uh, doesn't have the personnel, but the last three games, two of their last three opponents were held to scoreless. So it gives you some indication uh, what kind of defensive football they play. Lowry wants to throw it from the end zone, lobbing it up the sideline much too far. As the receiver, Lionel Crawford, who played quarterback for Wisconsin last year, was well covered. And Lowry, avoiding the safety, just arched it out of bounds. Tyler Adams, Jim Baston, Rick Godfrey, Chuck Bellin, Brady Pearson, Dave Check will be the offensive line for the Badgers. The backfield, Tony Lowry, Mark Montgomery, Robert Williams, Tim Ware, and Tony Spade at the receiving post. So from the one-yard line, Lowry calls signals for Wisconsin. Quick cadence, running play over right guard, nets about four, that's it. And Wisconsin, facing about 10 yards, will have to punt the football. Rich Frimmel stacked up the play for Ohio State. Well, I counted the down, Paul, that was a penalty down. Of course, I shouldn't have. It's still third down for the Badgers, who must get to the 14 for a first down. Badgers a little bit outmanned offensively and uh, they've had to put together this offense Jack running from the eye with the tailback taking the handoff near the goal line and he is rammed to the turf by Greg Smith who turns in a stellar play Buckeyes defensively Derek Foster getting the starting call ahead of Alonzo Spellman who's shaken up your linebackers Jason Simmons Tom Lee Steve Tovar and Jay Cook in the secondary, Jim Peel, Mark Polini, Foster Polk, and Vinnie Clark. Jeff Graham back at the 40 to take the punt. Pretty good kick away from Graham, who manages to haul it in at the 40 and then strides out of bounds at the 36. Brad Brecky towed that one downfield for Wisconsin, coming into the game averaging 38 yards per punt. For the Buckeyes set up shop again on the Wisconsin half of the 50. Brecky is not known as a real deep punter, but that was a fine punt pulling Jeff Graham over to the far sideline, giving Graham little space to maneuver and run, but the Buckeyes have excellent field position. 9.51 left, first quarter, no score. Buckeyes have missed one golden opportunity already, however. Robert Smith, gaping hole, cutting it back. Running down the sideline, all the way inside the five, stepping out at the four, or maybe outside the five. Thomas and Mahone flushed Robert Smith out of bounds, who's just topped Archie Griffin's freshman rushing mark. Fine run, he gets a block by Roy Nichols, 63, then he makes a great move on number 37, Scott Nelson, to break himself free. Now he's off to the races and just about goes all the way. Greg Thomas, number 27 for the Wisconsin Badgers, manages just to shove Robert out of bounds, but Robert's got one record in his hip pocket already today. Almost had a touchdown in his hip pocket. Scotty Graham finds Pater. Touchdown, Ohio State. Welcome back, Scotty Graham. Buckeyes on top, 6-0. A little over five minutes gone in this game. And they did that very quickly, Jack. A couple of big runs. And the Buckeyes, what do you know, are right in the end zone. Scotty Graham's second touchdown of the season. Williams on to try the point after. Herb Street to take the snap and spot it at the 10. High snap, but Herb Street got it down. Williams kick is through and with nine minutes and 39 seconds left in the opening stanza Ohio State leads Wisconsin by a score of seven to nothing Scotty Graham the main man right here taking the straight handoff running behind some good blocking over center Dan Beatty and then just 
bursting and a hard jump right into the end zone. Good power run. Scott Graham, it's been a down year for him a little bit because of that ankle injury that he suffered earlier in the year. But on this run right here, look, 76, Dan Beatty is running inside of 63. Roy Nichols, big hole right there in the center of the line, but Scott uses his power. And as you said, Jack, it's good to see him start to come back at the right time towards the end of the year because Scott had been hampered by that angle injury most of the year that's taken away a great deal of his push and his effectiveness in terms of his running style, but he's been there for the Buckeye freshman backs all year long with his great ability to block for them. So he has made the contribution, but it's good to see him running the ball back at full strength again. And he looked every bit of 100% on that play. Bright blue skies overhead here at Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. Probably not much more than uh, 45,000 or so on hand for this game. As Barry Alvarez Badgers are on the short end early of a 7-0 count. Williams preparing to kick off for Ohio State. And he'll boot it to Troy Vincent who's back at the 5. You mentioned the name of Roy Nichols, Paul, who helped carve out the opening for Scotty Graham. Nichols getting the starting call at a guard position today ahead of Len Hartman. And then at the tackle spot is Klein on the Ohio State offensive line. This is Vincent, and he is collared short of the 20. Authoritative tackle applied downfield by Ohio State's Chico Nelson, who continues to excel in special teams. A quickie drive turned in by the Buckeyes on their last possession. Cashing in on possession of the football on the Wisconsin side of the 50. And in just a couple of plays, the Buckeyes got six points. Williams followed with a point after. 6'3", 195-pound junior quarterback Tony Lowry for Wisconsin. Play action. Lowry zips it up the left side. A leaping stab at the 32. Hauled in nicely on the play by Bill Williams. 6'3", 209-pound senior. Vinnie Clark popped him in the back. Lowry probably is a little bit more effective with this rollout. Pretty good athlete. Nice arm throwing that sideline pattern. Big reception for the Wisconsin Badgers on that play. As Wisconsin gets a first down. Lowry completing passes at a 57% clip coming into the game today. This time on a sprint out to this side to Williams. Clark shakes it loose from him. Well, Vinny said, I couldn't strip it the first time. I'll just try harder the second time around. And that he did. And he separated the ball from Williams out in the right flat. Well, Williams has been involved in the first two passes, and both times he's taken some big hits right here and is a little bit late getting up. Vinny Clark really coming up and giving him a big hello. Williams coming into this ball game had 24 receptions. Vinny Clark, of course, is the intercepting leader in the Big Ten with five. And that last pass was close to being a reception. It was ruled no possession, incomplete forward pass, however. In the left flat, Clark, or I should say Polk, wraps up the receiver. Tony Spate, a 5'8 sophomore, was tackled by Polk, Foster Polk of Ohio State. Lowry looks right first, then deals back left in a hurry to Tony Spate. Foster Polk right over there on that quick short out pass. The Buckeye defensive backs playing very tight coverage right now. Perhaps they may be looking to pick off one of these. Here is a sprint draw, breaking into the clear to the 44, and a first down is running back Robert Williams, number three, a 5'9", 185-pound scat back. Polk on his second straight tackle for Ohio State. First and 10 Badgers. Lowry takes his hand off, and going to Williams, cuts way back across the grain, gets beyond Tovar, but Foster Polk right coming up from his cornerbacking position hits Williams very hard, brings it out. Williams, 856 yards, 4.3 average and 4 TDs thus far on the year. 8.42 to go, first quarter. 
Williams trying to skirt left in. This time he is dropped. There is a flag, I believe, on the play. Good hit applied by Tom Lease. Mark Williams assisted. But maybe a Buckeye had a hold of Williams' mask. Let's see if the headgear was yanked on. That's the call from referee John Nealon. Bad break for the Buckeyes as Nealon rules. Lowry on the handoff to Williams. Williams tries to get outside. There's Lease, and then Williams comes up from his linebacking post. Two Buckeyes right there on the play. Couldn't see exactly one, which one got his hand uh, in the face mask. It's ruled an incidental face mask call. Just a five-yard assessment against Ohio State, so it's first and five. Not much running room. Ken Coleman stacked up Mark Montgomery just across the line of scrimmage. Montgomery, a freshman, six foot, 190 pounds. Tall task here for the Buckeye defensive unit. Wisconsin had a first and five. And now a second and four for the Badgers. Robert Williams, the only running back, and he gets the football. Eludes one man a second. Another flag flies. Williams earns a first down for Wisconsin. But let's check out the penalty marker. And again, a face mask call against Ohio State. Williams taking his hand off, and Jason Simmons has a shot of him. Can't quite bring him down. Now Williams gets outside of contain, cuts back on the play. Is met at that point. I don't really see the face mask. It's really hard to see. Well, the flag was right beneath the man who was tackled. I would have to think, Paul, that the face mask call occurred a few yards away from the tackle on Robert Williams. Well, if it was, it was an invisible one. I certainly didn't see it. It, it, it appeared to be a phantom call, but <laughs> the Badgers have a first down. They'll take it. Lowry keeping, zipping inside the 30, dashing to the 20, all the way down to the 18. Tony Lowry skipping for 19 yards. Brian Cook finally caught up with him. A good play fake and reverse action right here. Catches the Buckeye defenders all up inside. Good blocking. Now Lowry is outside of contain with a dual option of run and pass. He elects to run. Makes big yardage out of it. And Brian Cook falls back and makes the tackle. But the Wisconsin Badgers are on the move. And the Buckeyes will have to stiffen. This is Williams trying to skirt the end. Nothing doing. Jason Simmons, who had a fine game a week ago for Ohio State. In fact, he's had an outstanding redshirt freshman season. He wrapped up the ball carrier neatly. He certainly has. He has 42 tackles on the year, and this is number 43. Watch him play off the tight ends block all alone. He's back there. That's a tackle for loss for Jason Simmons, who comes into the ball game with 10 tackles for loss. That was number 11. He's doing outstanding work at that linebacking position for the Buckeyes as a redshirt freshman. Wow, those are fine freshman totals for Simmons. Second down, 13 to go. Draw action, Buckeyes stuff it. Back at the 27, Greg Smith manhandles the ball carrier, Robert Williams. Rich Frimmel assists. Well, the play before, you saw Jason Simmons, who leads in tackles for loss, Look who's in second in tackles for loss. Number 57 right there. Greg Smith as he drills the ball carrier. Robert Williams on the draw play right into the synthetic turf. Greg Smith who played his high school ball at Canton Glen Oak. is coming on strong for Ohio State. The injured Badger is Mark Montgomery. Wisconsin does not have a lot of depth at the running back position. In fact, Paul, Barry Alvarez's team entered the season inheriting just one scholarship running back. 
It's been a real problem with the Badger football team. The lack of overall team depth, specifically on offense, as we see Mark Montgomery being helped from the field of play. The reason why Barry Alvarez had to switch some players around. For example, Lionel Crawford, who played quarterback a year ago. Wisconsin, as we see on third down, conversions just 30%. Badger's not very high in that category, but depth has been a problem for this football team. Boy, oh, it sure has. Kevin Ellison has replaced Montgomery. Williams, the man in motion. 18 yards needed for a first down. It's a draw play. Robert Williams stumbles to about the 19. Boy, oh, he had another five or seven yards ahead of him. Buckeyes get a break there. Wisconsin Ball's about uh, 12 yards short of a first down. Buckeyes really gambling, coming with a big blitz, and people just run out of position, creating a big hole for Williams to run through it. He doesn't really fake out Pelini. He just falls to the turf. If he'd been able to hold his balance, he perhaps could have gone all the way. Rich Thompson to try a field goal, measuring 37 yards. He's 8 of 14 on the season, and he's now 9 of 15 as he buries it between the uprights. So with 5.15 left in the opening period, Ohio State's lead has been sliced from 7-0 to 7-3 on the field goal by Thompson. Pretty good offensive drive provided by the Badgers, who've been punchless for most of the season offensively, Paul, but a good surge on that possession. Well, they showed that they could move the football. Of course, they were aided by a couple of uh, face mask penalties that kept their drive alive, but basically you have to give Wisconsin some credit in uh, initiating a pretty good drive, running the football and making some yardage and throwing it when they had to. And you've got to be impressed with quarterback Tony Lowry, who hails from the Columbus, Ohio area, Groveport, Madison. Well, he sat out a year last year, primarily because he didn't quite agree with the philosophy of uh, former coach Don Morton in the beer offense. And so he came back to this football team just this year and looks a little bit rusty as we look at the scoring drive. Four minutes, 24 seconds, 61 yards, 10 plays, a 37-yard field goal by Thompson. But uh, nevertheless, Barry Alvarez believes that Tony Lowry certainly is a guy who can get it done. And Thompson steers the kickoff to Robert Smith, who lets it hit short of him and out of bounds inside the 15. So the Badgers will be penalized and will re-kick. more than five minutes left in this opening period. Buckeyes have had two possessions, outstanding field position both times. Interesting switch done by Ohio State before the second kickoff by Thompson Paul. Mm -hmm. We noticed that Dante Lee and Robert Smith have pulled a switch. Smith has moved from the side of the field on which he was positioned on the previous kickoff, his place has been taken by Dante Lee. Roberts taken Dante Lee's former spot. I wonder if the kickoff man will notice the change. Well, let's see exactly where Rich Thompson kicks this football. It's a line drive boot bounding to Smith at the 16, looking for a block or two. He powers to the 32-yard line. Buckeyes will start from that spot first and 10. Robert Smith not really able to time that football and get up into the wedge and get to the far outside, but nevertheless, he did a pretty good job. That was his statistics for kickoff returns on the year. Robert Smith, all-purpose running, number four in the Big Ten Conference. He's doing it all for the Buckeyes in his freshman year. Takes this kick on the hop, gets out to the outside, but can't quite get to the red, uh, wedge yet. Uh, Tyrone Mahone right there on the takedown for Wisconsin. Jeff Graham in motion across the formation. First and 10 Ohio State. This is Scotty Graham barreling over left guard and he is twisted down after a three yard advance. Gary Casper threw a shoulder into Scotty Graham and pounced him to the turf. Greg Fry has amassed some outstanding statistics here at Ohio State. 5,900 career passing yards. Not bad. Second behind Arch Leister. 
And that's pretty good company, I would say. Second down and seven for the Buckeyes. Graham in motion the other way on this play. Robert Smith looking for a hole. Slashing across the 40 to the 43. He's got a first down. Fifth-year senior Greg Thomas. And fine defensive tackle Dan Davey meet Smith, who garners a Buckeye first down. Well, Robert Smith coming into today's ball game, needing less than 20 yards, have already gotten the necessary 20 yards to break Archie Griffin's run. I like the style of running. Look at this cutback, showing change of direction. Robert showing a little bit more feel in running the daylight as the season goes on. First part of the year was pretty much a straight-ahead runner. We near the four-minute mark. Badger showing blitz. And it's a draw, and it's smelled out by Wisconsin. Gary Casper stuffed the play for a loss. What running lane there was was eaten up by the Blitz and Badgers. Casper on the hit. He's their tackle leader into this ball game. Well, we saw the Buckeyes earlier blitz and guess wrong. Here, the Badgers get a blitz and guess right, sending their middle linebackers on the draw play to Robert Smith and stack Robert Smith up behind the line of scrimmage for a loss on the play. Second down and 14 following the setback of four. The guys must get inside the Wisconsin 48 for a first down. Robert Smith took the deep handoff and races out to the 50. And he's sandwiched right there, coming up two and a half or three yards shy of the first down stake. Greg Thomas met him solidly for the Badgers. Well, Robert Smith, 850 yards coming into today's ball game. Not a big week last week, just 51 yards. This has been a good play for him all year. A counter play which allows him to get outside and use that speed and get into the broken field. Smith. Off to a fast start today, tackled by Thomas on that last run. Third and a little more than two. Robert Smith has an opening. He stood up at the 45, but he gained five, and it's a first and 10 Ohio State. Brendan Lynch and Tyrone Mahone double-teamed Robert Smith, who last week and this week, Paul, serving as the workhorse of the Ohio State running game. Well, he has 59 yards on seven rushes today. Last week, uh, had just 51 yards against that tough Iowa defensive line. Raymond Harris has checked in. Raymond playing with a, an ouchy knee. Play action to him, then Fry delivers in the flat. Catch made by Likovich, out of bounds inside the 40. Greg Fry faking the handoff right there to Raymond Harris, then stepping back and dealing the ball out in the flat to Gary Likovich, who's all alone after Brian Stabline from his wide receiving position had cleared the way for that opening. Good blocking up front, protecting Greg Fry and keeping that Wisconsin defensive rush off of him. Second and four, Buckeyes must get to the 35 for a first down. Pitches to Raymond Harris. He drives for a couple yards. Dan Batch was the man who tied up Raymond Harris coming off a knee injury, Paul. It's important that you get your confidence back. Well, he, Raymond is just going to have to play with this knee injury as Batch comes off of a block out there in the flat. Alan Klein did not sustain that block. If he would have sustained that block a little bit longer, Batch would have been tied up, allowing Raymond a little bit more of the line of scrimmage. But Batch is an awfully fine linebacker. You're not going to hold him out of many plays. And he's from Cincinnati, Ohio, by the way. Robert Smith is back in for the Buckeyes. The pitch goes to Smith. And he pounds his way inside the 30 to the 29. Formidable run by Robert Smith. And that sets up the Buckeyes inside the 30 with another first down. A minute 40 left in the opening period. Scott Nelson, the man who made the tackle. Wisconsin showing a penchant for blitzing and gambling in these third down run situations. That time, Robert Smith hard running, breaking for the first down. The Badgers, if they keep this tendency up, are going to be burned and burned big on that blitz. Scotty Graham and Robert Smith behind Fry. This is Scotty Graham charging for a couple. 
Brendan Lynch was in Graham's path outside the 25. As we near the one minute mark, late in the first quarter of play. The ends of Camp Randall Stadium rather sparsely attended, although the sides are filled pretty much to capacity. Certainly great weather for this time of year up here. Oh, delightful. Second down, Buckeyes need seven. This is Robert Smith. Oh, he glides along to the 20. He got a couple, three more yards than it looked like he might at the outset of the play. That's just good running, Jack. Not very much there. Not a good sustained effort off the line of scrimmage by the offensive line. Robert Smith using his feet, quick feet, stepping over would-be tacklers, and he probably made a lot more out of that play than he should have. I'll tell you, Robert Smith has made great strides, Paul, in picking up the knack of running the ball on the inside. Third and one for Ohio State. Raymond Harris churning for a couple. He's got the first down at the 18. And that was the final play of the opening period here at Camp Randall Stadium. Time's expired. The end of period number one. Buckeyes are driving as the first quarter comes to a close. Buckeyes seven, Badgers three. We'll return with more Ohio State football in a moment. Any uh... and earthquake activity stretches around the rim of the Pacific, bringing not only destruction, but also a wealth of strategies for coping with catastrophe. Join us as we look at preparations for disaster, this time on Fire on the Rim. Public TV for Northwest Ohio, this is WBTU-TV, Channel 27, Bowling Green, Ohio. With Paul Warfield, this is Jack Kramer at Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Second quarter action commencing. Buckeyes have a first and 10 at the 18 of Wisconsin. Robert Smith gets the nod and he registers a short gain. A minimal advance of just a couple yards. Second down and at least eight coming up. Well, not much going here for Robert Smith. It looks like he has a crack in the left side of the line, but uh, he meets good resistance from John, I mean, he meets good resistance of Lynch on the play. John Peterson was trying to head Brendan Lynch off, Paul, but it looked like uh, <laughs> they collided. They, they more or less bumped into each other, and that nullified what might have been a four or five yard gain. Instead, the Buckeyes picked up just a yard and a half. Fry throwing to the end zone, intercepted inbounds at the one. The ball arrived a little late, intended for Jeff Graham and Troy Vincent, the fine quarterback for the Badgers, snared it as he streaked in front of Graham. Well, Troy Vincent is having a very fine year for Wisconsin. If he were playing on a better ball club, he might be all Big Ten choice. And in this play, he has Jeff Graham covered one-on-one -on -one all by himself. He's right in Jeff Graham's hip pocket and picking it clean. The pass may have been just a hair late, but that was just fine defensive coverage by a good cornerback. Greg Fry on a straight drop back action gets good protection on the play, delivers the ball pretty much on time, but look at this. This is just excellent coverage. All the way, one-on-one, -on -one, and Troy Vincent did an excellent job. Well, that was a close call as to whether or not Vincent intercepted on the goal line or whether he intercepted a foot or two in the field of play. Very close. Badgers don't start at the 20. Instead, they start inside the one and try to run out of a hole. Wisconsin picks up two and a half. Second down and a little more than seven. From what I've seen of Wisconsin's defense so far, Paul, I'm pretty impressed. Well, again, as we talked about it at the start of the ball game, that's the area that Coach Barry Alvarez was going to give most of his attention to because he believes you build with defense first of all and the offense is, I guess, being a little bit neglected this year and they're doing as well as they possibly can do. If you look at Badgers scoring by quarters all year long, the Badgers have been outmanned in every quarter by uh, opponents. 
Sprinting around left end goes Williams. He's got a first down, I believe, out at the 11. Vinny Clark finally shut down the play. But Robert Williams got all of eight yards, and that's what he needed for a first down. Well, Wisconsin is hanging in here and doing a pretty decent job offensively. And Williams has been to work for us running these slants to the outside. Gets a good block at the point of attack by Montgomery. Gets outside and now rolling. Vinnie Clark comes up to make the stop. So it's a first and ten for the Badgers. Who try to dig out from the shadow of their own goalposts. A quick hitter right up the middle. Results in a small gain for Mark Montgomery. Judah Herman put the clamps on him, short of the 15. When you start talking about flow of the game and how it's going one way or another, you have, you have to be uh, very, very careful about exactly how. That's the Badgers offensive line coach, Paul. That's Bill Callahan who uh, is working this young offensive line and starting to come around. Lowry on play action. He's racked up back at the 13 as the Buckeyes throw him for a loss. 91, guess who? Jason Simmons once more. Ken Coleman assisted. Well, Lowry, as you see, number 82 right there is Coke. He's Cook. He's looking, but um, Simmons knows exactly where the quarterback and who has the ball. And Simmons comes in and sacks Lowry. And that's uh, Jason Simmons' fifth sack of the year. Jason Simmons... You know, just having an outstanding year as a as a uh, redshirt freshman and uh, just doing very well. Simmons, the sack man. Williams bursting ahead for about four or five, well short of a first down on third down. Rich Frimmel tripped him up, and Wisconsin must punt a fourth and four coming up for Barry Alvarez Badgers. And Brecky. Back pedals inside his five. Jeff Graham has retreated to his side of the 50. Buckeyes have lined up. They're going for the block. They got one late in the fourth quarter last week at Iowa. That was a big turning point in that game. Brecky does get this one away. Graham right on the 50 gets a block. And he lunges to the 41, but a flag was thrown. Brent Johnson may have made an illegal block just as Graham hauled in the kick. Clip against Ohio State, and that'll cost the Bucks 15. 7 to 3, our score. Buckeyes lead Wisconsin, 11.05 left, second quarter. Jeff Graham taking this punt, feeling it right there, and there's the clip that occurs. Brent Johnson on number 49, that's Searcy of Wisconsin. Brent Johnson guilty of the infraction of clipping on the play and clipping number 49 for Wisconsin, Henry Searcy. The Buckeyes will be backed up and start at their own 34-yard line. Coach John Cooper looking on at this Buckeyes. Got to be a little bit concerned, I think, at this point. The Buckeyes have shown some flash, but then they've shown some inconsistency. Buckeyes have been hit with a number of penalties now, spanning six quarters of football, including last week's game at Iowa. Robert Smith cutting it back, charging out to the 40. He's got at least six. Buckeyes will have a second and four coming up. Dan Batch made the hit on Robert. Gary Casper helped out. I want to get back to the comment as we look at Robert Smith, who's limping off the field right now. He takes this pitch, starts behind what appears to be pretty good blocking, cuts back. And then he's met with a couple of uh, tackles there by Wisconsin players. And now Robert Smith is limping off the field as being assisted. Uh, appears that he may have uh, injured an ankle. We'll have to follow that up. With some sort of a leg or ankle injury. Fry. Play action to Rayvon Harris. Fry unleashes to a Jeff Graham, who's wide open. He's upended after the reception outside the 40. Tyrone Mahone spilled him. Graham was running free inside the 45. 
one of the things that the Buckeye receivers do very well, good play action fake by Greg Fry, is run the square in patterns over the middle. And Jeff Graham wide open, but he's dumped on the play very severely by Wisconsin's Tyrone Mahone. Receiver split to the right. And that play is stuffed. Raymond Harris is belted down back at the 46. Dan Davey was the man who applied the jolt. The outstanding defensive tackle for the Badgers gets a tackle for a loss here. Well, number 94, Dan Davey, he plays a lot on the other teams, across the other team's line of scrimmage, and he does it there in that instance by beating Mick Schoep and getting around him, Dan Davey. Of course, coming into the day's ball game, he has 19 tackles for loss, Jack, and that's tops in the Big Ten Conference this year. I think I said, Dan, it's it's Don Davey to the Badgers who made that big hit. Well, accuse me of calling him Dan also. <laughs> Second and 14, Scotty Graham and Raymond Harris behind Fry. Raymond gets the call, and he pounds to the 40. Well, it's Robert Smith. No, it isn't. It's Butler Benote. So with Robert Smith out, shaken up a couple plays ago, and with Raymond Harris coming off a knee injury, Buckeyes go to Butler Benote in the second quarter, Paul. Thank goodness for the depth at that position. Well, Butler Benote, who's been playing a lot of ball for the Buckeyes in recent ball games, steps right in, front and center, and there's no drop off. Basically, in the ability to perform at that tailback position because Butler Benote is a good one. Third and eight. Badger showing nearly a 10-man front. Short drop by Fry. Fade pattern. Through the fingertip at the 20-yard line. Intended for Edwards. I wonder if Fry checked off at the line of scrimmage on that one, Paul. It looked like he did check off at the line of scrimmage. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Wisconsin was coming with all-out blitz. And a one-on-one. -on -one. The receiver has got a win in this instance. And... Bernard Edwards going up against Troy Vincent, and that time Troy Vincent comes up with another big play for Wisconsin. Bowman back at his 45 to take the snap. And he tries to sit this one down inside the 10. Buckeyes try to corral it, can't do it. As it hopped into the end zone after a hang time of four and a half seconds. Good hang time on the play. Punt just a little bit deep, but Jeff Bowman showing why he's the top punter in the conference. But then again, he showed it last week, and when his kicking was very important for Ohio State against Iowa. Again, Jack, we want to talk about the fact that uh, Wisconsin is managing to stay close, stay in contact. That's what Ohio State did essentially last week. John Cooper there looking on the sidelines. I know he wants to get something going, but the Buckeyes did that with Iowa. When the Buckeyes got in a position to win, they took advantage of it. So a couple of missed opportunities for Ohio State offensively with an interception and stalling uh, on a couple of drives. And at the same time, credit the Wisconsin defense, which is guided by coordinator Dan McCartney. First and 10 Wisconsin from the 20. Short passing play, minimal gain of three and a half yards in the flat to Tony Spade. Clock stops at 8.09 remaining second period. Buckeyes lead 7-3. Badgers have three very short receivers. 5'11", 5'8", and 5'6". That requires some pinpoint throwing from Tony Lowry, who's in the pocket once more, screens it in the right flat. Pretty good open field tackle by Ohio State out, out at the 28. Steve Tovar dragged down the receiver. Coming up just short of a first down was Raphael Robinson, Paul. Well, Lowry on this play is going for Robinson out in the flat all the way. Robinson backup running back does a good job of turning it up comes into the ball game with just three receptions and so he hasn't had a whole lot of work out of there and certainly they haven't been going to him throwing the football a lot but that time he made the catch when necessary seven and a half minutes to go second quarter third and two quick cadence this is robinson 
struggling to about the 30. A late flag was thrown. It looked like he got the first down. The ball marked right on the 30. That would be enough. Let's see what the penalty's all about. About time for one of the Badgers, don't you think, Paul? I would think. Barry Alvarez doesn't think so, though. <laughs> ah, the crippling holding call against Barry Alvarez, Wisconsin team. Wipes out a first down. Pitch back from Lowry back to Raphael Robinson. Robinson, you know, it could have been, it's hard to say, tight end Dave Check was up there blocking very close and he may have not been able to get those arms in and yet he may have had them out embracing someone well the penalty was stepped off from the 27 so the infraction occurred about three yards or so behind the point at which the tackle was made and the 10 yard walk off results and John Cooper's Buckeyes line up defensively now. Wisconsin facing a third and 12. Following the penalty, split back formation. It's a forward shovel. This is Williams scampering out to the 28, shy of a first down by two yards. That goes down as a completed pass. And it worked for 10, but Wisconsin needed two more. Set right. up pretty well on the play, actually. Lowry giving the field a chance to take a bet. He's knocked down by Jason Simmons, but then gives the forward pass to Williams, who gets upfield, as you said, Jack, just a little bit shy of the first down, tackled by Brian Cook. Jeff Graham to receive the punt from Brecky, who's at his 15. Against a very slight breeze, Brecky comfortably gets it away, and it's a boomer. Graham with the 21. He is dumped at the 26. Ohio State will start first and 10. Excellent kick by Brecky. Tyrone Mahone has played well on special teams for Wisconsin today. Race downfield to make the tackle. Tyrone Mahone and Cersei are down here very quick as Jeff Graham, 49, and Cersei. He holds them up, and then number six is Mahone. They stop Jeff Graham. He has nowhere to go. Not much hang time on that punt, but it was a deep and good one for Brecky. Just about 3.7 seconds in the air. You like to get it at least four or more. To give your coverage time to get under it, but Wisconsin did a good job of getting down under it, even though it was a rather a line drive punt. Robert Smith back in at tail. But Fry still has it off the fingertips of Graham at the 35. Good to see Robert Smith back in at tailback after being shaken up briefly on Ohio State's last possession. It's good to see Robert Smith back in there. Someone's got to get this ball club going. Buckeyes appear to be a little bit out of sync right now. As I said, they started out in spots and looked like they were going to make some things happen, but uh, they haven't been able to put two or three plays together. Uh, make this offensive unit gel so the chemistry is not there so far in the first half of this ball game. 6-12 to go. First half. 7-3 Ohio State. And the Buckeyes managed to carve out three yards and that's it. Robert Smith rolled down at the 29. Davey and Shackerford. Lamar Shackerford number 62, the fine freshman. Robert Smith Appearing to run without uh, any problems when he lift off the field a little bit early. Brought down on the play by Shackleford. Shackleford's totals for the year, 41 tackles. That was number 42, but he has five tackles for loss and three big sacks. Buckeyes. So he's been a productive defensive line. He sure has, Paul. Raymond Harris is in along with Robert Smith. It's Raymond on the draw. He's got a first down, bolting to the 42. Buckeyes open up a big hole for Raymond Harris, and he barreled for first down yardage. Malvin Hunter made the tackle across the 40-yard line. Buckeyes drive still alive. Raymond Harris coming into today's ball game, 4.8 yards per try. That was a good one the Buckeyes watched previously. Wisconsin call a couple of draw plays in this situation and get away with it. And the Buckeyes come back ditto with the same play. Raymond Harris, big tough running back on that play. 
Casper trying to strip the football from Harris, but Harris holds on and get a first down. Five minutes left until halftime. This is Robert Smith trying to spring it to the outside. Simply no running lane present. Dan Batch thwarted that play for Wisconsin, forcing a second and eight or nine. Minimal advance. Ohio State head coach John Cooper kneeling on the sideline. Buckeyes with four wins, a loss, and a tie in Big Ten Conference play coming into this game today. Fry, straight drop, pressure is on. He loses the football. It is scooped up by Wisconsin. It cannot be advanced, however. It'll be dead out at the 26. Malvin Hunter rejoicing in the end zone, but it will be possession for the Badgers outside the 25-yard line. No touchdown. Wisconsin will have a first and 10 following the fumble by Fry. Fred Fry, as he is being pursued by Don Davey, that outstanding defensive tackle gets his hand on it, strips him of the football. Now it's on the ground. Number 58, Malvin Hunter will scoop it up, but as you said, Jack, he cannot advance the football. The Badgers have it in a big play for Wisconsin. They've got excellent field position. Malvin Hunter, the outside linebacker, scooping up the football that was on the artificial turf. Barry Alvarez, Badgers, trying to play opportunistic football on this possession. As for the first time in five weeks, the Buckeyes lose a fumble. Sprint draw to the tailback. Not much running room as the Buckeyes snuff it out pretty well. Chico Nelson on the hit of Raphael Robinson at the 23. Raphael Robinson getting some work today. Has 145 yards rushing coming into today's ball game. And as you said, Jack, the graphic shows the first fumble of the Buckeyes have lost in recent weeks. Here's a reverse. Close to the 10. Lionel Crawford, who did some running at the quarterback position last year for Wisconsin Paul. Took the deep pitch and scampered for a first down, or very close to it. Wisconsin's bag of deceptives, as you see, Lowry starting one way on the option, flipping the ball and reversed back to Crawford, and Crawford getting pretty good blocking out ahead of him, and then he's bounced out of bounds on the play by Jay Cook. But a first down for the Badgers, and the fans here at Camp Randall are getting into the ball game now. Lionel Crawford, 5'11", 180 pounds. Earned a first down for Wisconsin at the 13. Robinson on the sweep, right into the end zone, touchdown! Robinson scurries home for six points. Badgers lead 9-7 as Wisconsin's offensive front carved open a big cavity for Robinson to run through, and that he did. Badgers lining up for the point after. One of the officials tossing a football from the crowd back off the field of play as the teams line up for the extra point try. Wisconsin attempting to extend its lead to 10-7. Extra point try is good as Robinson receives congrats from his Badger teammates on the sideline. Wisconsin has forged on top 10-7 with 3.26 left second quarter. 
Robinson sprinting wide, taking this handoff, following number 32, Mark Montgomery, who gets a good block at the point of deck. Other good blocking inside as there's a hole that's very wide, and he sprints into the end zone for the touchdown. Second week in a row that we've seen a backup running back, Montgomery from Iowa last year, but this is last week. This is Robinson. Raphael Robinson getting good blocking at the point of attack. Big hole, gaping hole. He slides through for the six-pointer to put Wisconsin ahead in this ballgame. Raphael Robinson, a junior running back. We mentioned earlier, Barry Alvarez Badgers inherited just one scholarship running back. Greg Thomas, the fine senior in the secondary. In fact, the Badgers start just six seniors on this team. In fact, in fact, they'll graduate 22 seniors this year. Just six of them graduate. Badgers making quick work of Ohio State following the recovery of the fumble. Wisconsin driving it into the end zone for seven. Dante Lee bringing the kickoff back from the five. He has dropped at the 26, and the Buckeyes will have three minutes and 21 seconds with which to work. Late in the second quarter, Troy Vincent, the Badger who scooted downfield to wrap up Dante Lee. Jack, what the Buckeyes had better do right now offensively is reestablish control of this ball game. This Wisconsin team is believing, starting to believe that they may have a chance in this game, and that's the worst thing that you want to do, give a team an opportunity to believe that they can stay with you in a ball game. And I'm sure one of Coach Alvarez's goals was to be close at halftime and have a chance to influence the outcome of the game in the second half. Fry is wide of Graham across the 35. Wisconsin's pass coverage doing a pretty good job, Paul, of upsetting the timing of Fry's throws, his communication at any rate, with the receivers. Well, I think all the credit must go to Troy Benson, number 22. Uh, we just didn't know how good this young man was, and, uh, because Wisconsin is down at the bottom of the standings in the Big Ten. He has done an excellent job in man-for-man -man coverage on Ohio State's best wide receivers. And that time, he was covering Jeff Graham out there, one-on-one. -on -one. You're right. He's done a fine job smothering Jeff Graham. This is Robert Smith. He breaks one tackle. Surges close to a first down. He may have it at the 37. Eddie Fletcher and Greg Thomas got a hold of Smith's jersey, but he simply ran away from them, almost leaving his jersey behind. Well, officials are taking a measurement or are going to take a measurement at this point so Robert Smith came up with a big push on that try gaining almost 10 yards on the play the clock stopped at 3.09 for I 2 of 9 on the afternoon after a subpar performance percentage wise a week ago although he did complete the critical throws when he had to Robert Smith registering a first down on the last running effort. Greg Fry finished last week, Jack, I believe right around the 37% mark, but the critical point, as you said, was the fact that he made the plays that he had to make for the Buckeyes to win. He sure did. Badger defense playing some stingy football at the moment. Buckeyes at the 37. Play action. Fry still got it. Wide open is Bobby Olive, who zips across the 50, is flushed out at the 45. Play goes for 18 yards. Vincent bounced Olive to the sideline. First and 10, Ohio State. Clock stopped at 2.48. A lot of action. Greg Fry spins one way. Nice fake to Robert Smith. Then rolls back to his left, finds Bobby Olive wide open in the field. Olive makes the catch. Now Bobby attempts to do what he does best, which is get a little bit of running room. And he's bounced out of the out of bounds on the play by Troy Vincent. Olive enjoying a fine year, 29 receptions for over 16 yards of catch. Scotty Graham running it inside for about four to the 41. Dan Batch and Kurt Maternowski in there on the tackle. 95 is Maternowski, a junior outside linebacker. 
Fry and company have two minutes and 20 seconds left in this half. Buckeyes trail 10-7. Second and six needed for a first down. Fry wants to throw for it. He's got time. Arching it to Jeff Graham inside the 10. A superb reception by Graham at the three-yard line. Troy Vincent on the coverage. But on this occasion, Paul, Jeff Graham beat him. Well, you're not going to hold Jeff Graham down all ball game long. And Jeff Graham running a post pattern beats Troy Vincent clearly on the play. Has to wait a little bit for the pass. Go up high for it. Vincent there to make the tackle, but the Buckeyes are right down inside of the five-yard line at about the four. First down, Jeff Graham, 32 receptions, over 600 yards, 634 yards, 19.8 yards per catch, which is the best in the Big Ten. Buckeyes need to cash in on this opportunity. Graham and Harris line up behind Fry. The pitch goes to Raymond. He barges to about the two. He's rolled down there by Davey. A minute and a half left, second quarter. Buckeyes down 10-7, but are seriously threatening the Wisconsin goal line at the moment. And we have a shaken up Badger, which enables Ohio State to get a free stoppage of the clock here at a minute 24. Lamarck Shackerford, the man who appears to be in a little bit of pain at the moment outstanding freshman from the Hoosier State and he's going to hobble off Greg Fry again flipping back to Raymond Harris and he's going right up into the area where Shackleford who plays at the nose tackle position is right caught right in the middle of all that action and he's being now assisted from the field to play. Very fine freshman player. Certainly be missed and uh, part of the stalwart of this Wisconsin Badger defensive line plays right alongside Don Davey, the outstanding defensive tackle. It looked, Paul, like Davey, who's 270 pounds and 6'4", might have rolled up on the back of Shackerford's foot. Always uh, that problem in the interior defensive line. A lot of bodies get tangled up there. Second and goal for the Buckeyes. Split back. Scotty Graham and Raymond Harris. This is Raymond Harris. Touchdown. Harris slashed into the end zone for six points. And the Buckeyes are on top 13-10. And the Buckeye Rooters who are here in Madison stand and cheer on the Ohio State offensive unit, which regains the lead for the Buckeyes. Williams on to tack on point number 14. Good snap. Placement by Williams is right on the money. And with a minute 10 seconds left in the second quarter, Ohio State has forged back on top, 14 to 10 over Wisconsin. Raymond Harris running over right where Dan Beatty in that area of Virginia vicinity thereabouts and popping right through for the touchdown. Loses balance, gets into the end zone, but nice hole that was opened up by the Ohio State offensive line, Raymond Harris. Now sitting on the bench, relaxing a little bit. Coming into this ballgame, one of the many Ohio State players that has a slight injury. Raymond, of course, uh, injured his knee a couple of weeks ago. Has uh, damaged his cartilage. Per can still play, but after the season is over with, will perhaps have to undergo some minor surgery to correct the problem. The Buckeyes now up 14 to 10. That scoring drive. 2 minutes, 16 seconds, 73 yards, 7 plays. A 3-yard blast by Raymond Harris. And Raymond Harris, that's his 8th touchdown of the year. He's been the guy that the Buckeyes have gone to down and close because he has a nose for the goal line. Troy Vincent back outside his 5 to take the kickoff. You've got to believe, Paul, that Raymond, despite the injury, 
is getting needed work this afternoon and will hopefully rebuild that confidence, enabling him to play with uh, all the mental fortitude he needs next week, despite the injury, against uh, Michigan. A squib kick is fielded inside the 20 and returned back out to the 35. Scott Nelson, 37, who plays on special teams for the Badgers as well as serving as a backup defensive halfback, brought the ball out across the 35. Chico Nelson tackled Scott Nelson. A minute five to go in the half. Well, let's see what the Tony Lowry 65-second offense looks like here. Well, Jack, you raised an interesting point. Barry Alvarez would have to be happy at this point in the ball game to be at least in contact with Ohio State, but we'll see what he decides to do in this series. And it's a draw play to Robinson. He is met stubbornly at the 38 by a host of white-shirted Buckeyes. Clock is stopped at 54 seconds. I'm not sure why the ball, or why the clock was stopped, apparently to extricate the uh, ball carrier from the pile, but it gave Wisconsin a little advantage. And the incompletion stops the clock at 44 seconds. When play resumes, the Badgers will have a third down and seven. Well, Tony Lowry had come into the game, Paul, completing about 57% of his passes. We haven't seen him throw accurately very long yet. He's thrown some concise short passes very well. Here's the pitch forward to Robinson, but it nets just two. Steve Tobar smothers the play, and now the Badgers have got to punt with 37 ticks left on the clock. And I believe Ohio State called for the timeout, Paul. Buckeyes would like to have another opportunity with uh, Jeff Graham. All year long, been one of the best punt returners in the Big Ten. I'd like to get the ball into Jeff's hands. Coach John Cooper on the sidelines looking on and uh, get a couple of plays in, if possible, and see if they can get on the scoreboard and uh, widen this lead over Wisconsin. Graham is strolling back downfield as the Badgers coverage team readies itself. I believe Paul Buckeyes have used just one timeout in this half and have two remaining. So they've got two timeouts, 37 seconds. Didn't particularly understand Wisconsin's play calling. They start off with a draw play. I thought they were just going to be intent to use the clock up and then they go to a pass to stop the clock the next play now they go back to a shovel pass which is almost like a run and uh, of course uh, giving the ball giving Ohio State another opportunity with the football Buckeyes line up going for the block Brecky takes the snap back inside his 30 gets it away superb kick Graham fair catches at the 16 as he was surrounded by a couple of red shirted Badgers Excellent boot by Brecky. Improving on the hang time also. He got it up there for four and one-tenth of a second. And that's the first time he's crashed the four barrier today. <laughs> well, if you ask him, he'll probably tell you, I'll compensate for the hang time with a little extra distance. <laughs> Scotty Graham and Robert Smith behind Greg Fry. Buckeyes have receivers split left and right in the person of Olive and Jeff Graham. Buckeyes are trying to work out of a little bit of a hole with a running play to start. Ohio State not electing at the moment to use a timeout. And the clock is winding down inside 15 seconds and it looks like the Buckeyes will say, see you later. That's it. We'll finish the half with a 14-10 lead and whip you in the final two quarters. It is halftime here at Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. Our score, Ohio State 14, Wisconsin 10. We'll return with more Ohio...
With Paul Warfield, this is Jack Kramer back at Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison. We're seconds away from the start of the third quarter of this game, which finds Ohio State nursing a 14-10 lead. Buckeyes scored first, going up 7-0. But then the Badgers came on with 10 unanswered points, taking the lead on this touchdown romp, Paul. Raphael Harrison, rather Raphael Robinson, will split the end zone and take it in on a nice jump that puts Wisconsin after the point after 14 to 10 but the Buckeyes come back with a march of their own and it's culminated when that man right there Raymond Harris smashes into the end zone to give the Buckeyes the lead with the point after of 14 to 10. Buckeyes lead in terms of first downs by four Buckeyes with a huge advantage in terms of passing and rushing yardage over Wisconsin, but Buckeyes have committed three turnovers according to the stat sheet. Buckeyes have a sizable lead in terms of possession time. Over five minutes to Ohio State's advantage, but on the scoreboard, closer than the stats might indicate. Only a four-point advantage for Ohio State over Barry Alvarez, Wisconsin Badgers, who are right in the thick of this game. That's where they wanted to be, close to John Cooper's Buckeyes when that second half begins. And the Badgers, of course, Jack will get the football opening up this half. John Cooper on his side of the field. And Wisconsin, which has had trouble all year long with the offense, will turn to the offense, first of all, here in the second half. This is Vincent. A yard deep. Buckeyes with good pursuit downfield. Vincent skirts the left end, though, and gets back out across the 25 to the 27 or 8. Pretty good run back by Vincent. Buckeyes appeared to have a couple of men down beyond the wedge, but could not impede the progress of Vincent. Vincent takes this kick a yard deep and then swings wide to the left. Brent Johnson going after him. Can't quite get him right there. And, of course, she killed Nelson taking an arm and swatting him and kind of getting him down. But a fine return as Wisconsin will start their offense beyond the 25-yard line. Lowry Paul was 6 of 9 in the first half, improving on his season performance of 57%. He was 67% in the first two quarters. Draw play, popping it for a couple yards to the outside was Robert Williams. Jay Cook, number 82 for Ohio State, made the tackle on Williams. Did a good job. Williams is a kind of runner who will run all over the place. That time he started up to the interior part of the line in the middle. Then he bounced outside, but Jay Cook was sitting on the outside of his linebacking position and didn't get influenced inside and made a fine stop for a short game. Badgers must get to the 37 for a first down. In motion across the formation was Crawford. Deep handoff goes to number three, who's Williams. Pretty close to first down yardage. His forward progress carried him out across the 35 before Tom Lease made the stand-up tackle. And it is first and ten for Wisconsin, starting the second half on two rushes from scrimmage by Robert Williams, the tailback. Badges. Coming out, trying to establish something, and Williams running off a good blocking inside. Chuck Bellin trapping and creating a way for Williams, Lease, Clark, and Walton all together for the Buckeyes on the stop. Alonzo Spellman, who did not start the game for Ohio State, is not in here at the outset of the second half. Trying to break contain is Lowry. He rambles out across the 40, lunges into the 45. He records a seven-yard pickup on first down. Lowry making a good decision, electing not to throw the football and then using his great mobility skills to escape and get outside of contain, get downfield and make plus yardage on the carry. Wisconsin will find itself in a second down in a long... Well, make it a short three. 
Lowry exhibits some long strides when he takes off with the football. He's a rangy 6'3", 195-pound quarterback. Running for about three or maybe four, and a first down is Robinson. His second effort got him the first down by a yard. Steve Tovar put the pinch on him, but it's a first and ten for Wisconsin from the 50. And a little bit of delay counter with misdirection and Robinson following Pierce and also Bellin doing a good job blocking for him up front. Breaks a tackle and makes a first down for the Badgers. Badgers are on the move here in the third period. Was that a new look play, Paul, or have we seen that a few times in the first half? Well, I'll say we've seen it a few times. This is Lowry looking downfield, arching a bomb inside the 15, broken up. Pretty good coverage applied by Clark, who was one Buckeye downfield. And he was assisted by Mark Pellini, 48. Broken up by Mark Pellini. As Lowry skied that one, showing the strength of that right arm of his. Well, Lowry that time was trying to hit, I believe it's Ware on the play. Tim Ware, the five, six wide receiver. Only problem is Lowry took too long to make a lot of that play to develop. Where had he was open at one instance, but then the coverage got back on him. Lowry kind of uh, hung one up there. Other problem, Ware needed to be 6'6 six, six instead of 5'6. <laughs> <laughs> one broken tackle. Nearly a first down at the 41. Strong run by Mark Montgomery. Buckeyes appeared to have that play stymied for far fewer yards than it got in the end. Montgomery takes a straight handoff and uh, just is jammed up right here momentarily, but he falls off of that tackle by Judah, attempted tackle by Judah Herman, and then it bounces outside, gets downfield on the play. Derek Foster, as well as Benny Clark, finally made the stop, but he's very close to a first down. The Badgers need about, about a yard. You're right, Paul. Wisconsin just one short of a first down. Montgomery is... Knocked down at the 30, or I should say the 42. He lost a couple feet. Steve Tovar stepped across the line of scrimmage and broke up that running play before it got going. Wisconsin's got a fourth down and at least two. The Badgers must get just short of the 40, and believe it or not, Barry Alvarez sends on the punting team. Crowd not happy. I would have thought for sure that down 14 to 10 in the third quarter with only one win on the season so far. There's no way we'd see Brecky punting to Graham on fourth down, but we are. And the kick is lofted to Graham who signals fair catch at the 17. A penalty marker is thrown. Let's see if we have a penalty against Graham. For moving downfield after catching the ball. Or is it against Wisconsin for perhaps not giving Graham the room he needed? A couple of defenders right down there. Whoa. <laughs> well, Mahone comes down there late, but um, uh, I don't really see anything that's that no. flagrant with that. No, that's a, a touch foul at best that could have been ignored very easily. So it's all Ohio State possession across the 22 as we take a look at Greg Fry's statistics compiled in the first two quarters. Four of 11 throwing. Robert Smith, a counter around right in, a big gainer in progress. Smith hops it into the secondary, all the way to the Wisconsin 48. A 30-yard dash by Robert Smith. Tyrone Mahone tackles him way downfield. Nice move by Smith as he starts up inside, breaks outside, now uses his feet. Watch this move the second time today. He's put it on Scott Nelson out in the broken field, and Scott has got to be talking to himself, but finally the pursuit with Mahone on the play along with Kruger brings Robert Smith down. He's over 100 yards, 129 to be precise. 
This is Scotty Graham. Badgers sit on him at the 46, a two-yard advance. Brendan Lynch made the stop. Ten minutes left in the third period. Buckeyes on top, 14 to 10. And the long jaunt by Smith, the play before the last one, has given Ohio State good field position outside the Wisconsin 45. Jeff Graham slot left. Bobby Olive split 12 yards to the left. Split backs are Scotty Graham and Robert Smith. Passing formation. Fry looking. Rifles it toward the end zone for Olive. He can't get it inside the five. Fry and Olive trying to hook up on a play which was not available in the first few seconds. Olive may have had lived that route, Paul, and Ian Fry nearly connected for six points. A little bit of a chess game going on down on the field. Wisconsin showing what appeared to be a blitz. <laughs> Greg Fry went to a checkoff. Wisconsin defense checked out of the blitz, got back into coverage. Then Greg Fry got great protection. He just stayed with Bobby Olive until he came all the way across the field. Third down and seven. Fry for Jeff Graham. He's got it. Knocked down at the 27 or 8. It's a first and 10 for the Buckeyes. Scott Nelson put the pop on Jeff Graham. And looked like Nelson suffered the uh, worst of the deal. Greg Fry looking for the first down right here. Knows exactly where to go to get it. And the Jeff Graham who runs a nice curl in pattern. Beating on the play Troy Vincent. Vincent was looking for some help from Scott Nelson who came up late from on the inside in his safety position to make the stop. First down, Ohio State. High formation this time. Scotty Graham and Robert Smith behind Fry. Oh, it's a reverse to Bobby Olive. He's got a couple of linemen out ahead of him. Olive, Olive stops on a gun, cuts it back to the 11. Troy Vincent cornered Olive, who scurried on the play for about 13 yards. Nice ball handling fake into the interior to Robert Smith and a reverse to Olive and Olive swinging right wide. Watch this move right there on Greg Thomas, 27. He stops, cuts inside. Bobby Olive, great open field running ability. Made a little bit more out of that play with his ability to shake free in the broken field. 8.50 left. Third quarter, Buckeyes on a march outside the 15. This is Scotty Graham barging for a couple to maybe the 13. Brendan Lynch stacked up the play for Wisconsin. Buckeyes will have a second down and seven or eight needed for a first down. Lynch is 42 for the Badgers, helping call those defensive signals. Fry will line up with Scotty Graham and Robert Smith behind him. Robert Smith, by the way, needs about 20 yards to reach the 1,000 mark on the season. Pitch to Robert. Looking for an opening. Can't find much running room. As the Badgers sandwich him at the 10-yard line. Malvin Hunter and Troy Vincent clamp Smith, leaving Ohio State five shy of first down yardage. Third coming up. Let's see what's in John Cooper's bag of tricks here. Buckeyes, as you can see, have outscored the opposition handily in the second, third, and fourth quarters this year. Once Ohio State's gotten into the second half, the Buckeye offense has really warmed up. Camp Randall crowd making a lot of noise. This is Raymond Harris, butting shoulders and heads with some Badgers, getting a couple, but he's two yards short of a first down. Dewar Sharp and Brendan Lynch made the hit. And a flip right back to Raymond Harris as they go to the short side of the field. Ohio State tried to 
be deceptive setting a strong formation to the right side and running back left but Wisconsin wasn't having any part of it and made the stop a couple yards shy of the first down and the Buckeyes will send on the field goal unit to pick up the three-pointer it is fourth and two so Tim Williams is called on to boot a 24-yard field goal three seconds on the play clock Buckeyes get the snap away. Williams kick, hooks from right to left and misses. John Nealon signaling no good. Buckeyes had to hasten that play, Paul, just beating the snap from center. Hard to tell whether that may have affected the kick or not. Well, usually Mr. Reliable, Tim Williams, who has a 83% make a field goal hooking that ball to the left but you are right Jack the clock was down to zero at the point that ball was snapping they may have rushed it in order to get the play off of course hindsight is easy if you're going to go for three in that position you might as well take the five get a little better angle on the field goal precisely take the five take your time five yards with the leg that Tim Williams has and the accuracy is not going to make that much difference but Wisconsin dodges another bullet and it brings back this scenario that we've been talking about during the course of the ball game. You don't want to miss those opportunities to put a team away like Wisconsin that doesn't have anything to lose. And the Buckeyes have missed 10 points and opportunities for sure today. Seven on their first possession and missing a field goal here. And there was at least one other opportunity. Wisconsin turned in the interception on the goal line. Buckeyes were driving then. That occurred in the first half, so you can count up at least three golden opportunities. And the Buckeyes have gotten nothing out of them in this game. Still hold on to a 14-10 lead. Jim Peel makes the tackle inside the 20. That play results in a negative two for Wisconsin. Good play by Peel. Peel forced very hard once Wisconsin shown this play, which is the wide sweep that they've been making good yardage. Peel came up from his position, made a strong tackle. Lowry wants to throw, has a man for a minimal gain of four yards out to the 22. That's it. Back up tight end to haul it in, Jim Bourne. And it leaves Barry Alvarez and the Badgers far short of first down yardage. Well, Wisconsin finding itself pretty much in a position in this series, backed up in their own territory, finding themselves in a third in possession. They've got to throw the football to make the yardage, but Alvarez may decide to play it safe and keep it on the ground. Two receivers split far left. Bill Williams in motion. Lowry wants to screen it back to the right. He does so to Robinson. The Buckeyes hem him in and drop him at the 29, two feet short of a first down. Derek Foster in the left flat, teamed up with Jim Peel to fence in Robinson. Jim Peel did an excellent job of stopping this play virtually himself. He's the only man that's loaned out to the screen, pretty well set up by Lowry back. Right there to Robinson and watch. Peel will come into your screen. There he is right there to cause Robinson to hesitate just a moment before he can gather himself to get going. So excellent job. Jim Peel stripped the blockers of Wisconsin, held his ground, got some inside support help from Foster and a couple of other people. It's a fine defensive job by Jim Peel. Brecky at his 16 to take the snap. Buckeyes lining up, but back off on the block attempt. Try to set up a return for Graham, who snatches it at the 30. And he is spilled at the 37. So with 4.06 to go in the third quarter, Ohio State will start from their own 36 following Brecky's kick. Tackle downfield made by Henry Searcy of Wisconsin. Barry Alvarez Badgers have found themselves in this position a few times this season, Paul, right in the hunt to win several games, just have not been able to do it. They're right there again. They have not been able to um, uh, maintain uh, their level of intensity going into the second half or third and fourth quarters of the ball game. That's where they usually run out of steam. 
This is Robert Smith springing it to the outside. Nice run by Smith as he skipped ahead to the 47. He got 11. First down, 10 yards to go, Ohio State. Scott Nelson on the tackle, assisted by Troy Vincent. Robert Smith showing a little more east-west capability, Paul. Very impressive today as he swings wide. He's going inside, outside, back. He's looking for spots all over the place to run. And with that great speed, when he combines the change of pace and cut back, uh, he's going to be awesome. And Robert Smith is just seven yards short of the 1,000-yard rushing mark as a freshman. Fry still has it. He's got Olive wide open. Olive is to the 35. Spun down at the 34. Scott Nelson made the tackle on Bobby Olive. Excellent fake by Fry. Helped set up the play. And Olive was on the loose. Well, the combination of fake right here and then Fry sprinting back to his left. Olive coming from right to left. The linebackers are caught all up inside. And Olive is wide open underneath the coverage, the deep coverage, and in behind the linebackers, and you allow him in the broken field, he makes good yardage on the play, and uh, stopped by uh, Dan Dave, uh, Davey, rather, on the play, uh, Scott Nelson. Graham in motion across the formation on a first and ten. This is Smith looking for an avenue, driving to the 29. A Badger hit him late after he'd gone down. It does not draw a flag, however. It will be second and five. Reggie Holt made the hit. I said Robert Smith because I've been repeating his name all afternoon. Let's give credit where it's due. Butler Benote on the last jaunt for Ohio State. Good enough for about four and a half yards. Buckeyes need a little less than six on second down. Play action to Benote, open in the middle of the field. It's caught inside the 20, down to the 13. Tight end Likovich snares it. Vincent bounced into the turf, first and 10 Buckeyes. Ohio State mixing up the plays nicely now. Fry with some superb faking. He's doing it with a lot of counter action on the faking and they're holding the Wisconsin linebackers at the line of scrimmage and they're reading play, run play, allowing the receivers to get into those intermediate zones and make the catches. Pat Cleary made the tackle on Likovich in the secondary. Graham in motion across the formation. Loose football. Badgers have got it at the 15. Recovery by Kurt Maternowski, Raymond Harris, or Scotty Graham, it may have been. Coughed up the football. No, it was 34. Raymond Harris. Raymond Harris taking the handoff. Met at the line of scrimmage. The ball not completely tucked away. It pops right out. And Wisconsin recovers that loose ball on the play. Maternowski. The outside linebacker, Junior, makes the stop for the Badgers and another squandered opportunity by the Buckeyes. Four turnovers committed by Ohio State, and those miscues are keeping this game close. Draw action. Robinson is strung out. He eludes a couple Buckeyes. Surges out to about the 19, a three-yard pickup. We're down to a minute 48 left, late in the third period. Jim Peel hemmed in the ball carrier. Boy, all the statistics in the world don't mean a thing, Paul, if you turn the ball over a few more times in the opposition. Well, again, Ohio State simply is not taking advantage of the opportunities when they exist. This is Lowry. He gets away from Simmons, streaks toward the sideline. He's crunched at the 20. And he goes down. He was buried to Jim Peel. Lowry sprinted up to the 20, and he was flattened. 
you would have to admire Lowry's courage in taking the hit on this play, but a quarterback should always run the safety at this point. Instead of dropping that shoulder, he should try to get out of bounds. He drops the shoulder, he catches the knee appeal on the hit, and it's a very tough hit. Lowry's still down on the field, but sprinting on the outside, he's been very dangerous. He gets a block from Montgomery to free him to the outside. At this point, he makes up his mind to go for it, but Jim Peel, number 46, comes up to meet him square with a hard hit. Now Lowry is down on, on the field and being attended to by the Wisconsin medical staff. Well, I think after that play, Paul, Lowry has learned that next time around he'll make a hook slide and get those feet down first, won't he? Well, quarterbacks are very... Alvarez out on the field uh, along with the Wisconsin staff. Now Alvarez, coach of the Badgers, is uh, talking with the official. Lowry still being attended to, but um, you're very right. He's going to uh, learn from that experience. Sean Wilson, number nine, the backup passer to Tony Lowry, is, is taking a few warm-up tosses on the sideline now. As uh, it looks like Wilson will get the call to go in, although Lowry is at least sitting up now and uh, talking to the staff. And uh, But Wilson taking his warm-up tosses on the sideline probably will go into the ball, ball game immediately. Well, I was pretty close in my first half guesstimate of today's attendance. What was it I said, Paul, about 41,400? Well, you always ran around the money, Jay. <laughs> <Good> numbers. <laughs> Badgers averaging about 52,000 here in 1990. Well, Sean Wilson has entered Tony Lowry, who played his high school football in the Columbus, Ohio area at Groveport, Madison, is out. Uh. And Sean Wilson, a 5'10", 182-pound sophomore, is in. He's 9 of 17 in the throwing department this year. A forward shovel goes for about four yards. On the receiving end was Robert Williams. It was a third and five play. And the Badgers don't get enough for a first down. Greg Smith snuffed it out. We near the 30-second mark late in the third quarter, and Wisconsin which has come up short of the first down yardage, will have to boot it away. Recky back at his 10. Buckeyes have set up the return. Graham at the 44, spins away from one man. Hemmed in momentarily, gets back up the middle, pops it to the outside. Look out, Graham on the loose. Dancing inside the 30, thrown down at the 29. The ever dangerous Jeff Graham showed his elusiveness. Pretty shifty run, but Graham. Jeff Graham spins away from Cersei, trying to make a tackle on him here. Now waving for interference, cuts back across the grain, bumps into Brent Johnson. Brent can't bring him down. Maddock and the rest of the Wisconsin guys at this point. Now he's to the outside, looking right. I need a little bit of help right there. <laughs> cuts back at that point on Mahone, but he's finally grabbed by Brecky, the punter. I guess the punter said no one else is going to do it. He's going to do it. And that return by Graham winds up the third quarter. It's Ohio State leading Wisconsin 14 to 10. Ring of volcanic and earthquake activity stretches around the rim of the Pacific, bringing not only destruction, but also a wealth of strategies for coping with catastrophe. Join us as we look at preparations for disaster, this time on Fire on the Rim. Monday night at 8. Public TV for Northwest Ohio, this is WBGU-TV, Channel 27, Bowling Green, Ohio. With Paul Warfield, this is Jack Kramer, back at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. Fourth quarter action, first and ten Buckeyes, inside the 30 of the Badgers. Following the long punt return by Jeff Graham. Robert Smith running up inside. Dashing into the secondary to the Wisconsin 16. A 13-yard bolt by Smith. 
who now has broken the 1,000-yard barrier as a freshman tailback at Ohio State. Mahone, number six, Collard Smith to the turf. From the eye formation, Robert Smith running behind Scott Graham, and he's just finding the open spots all day long, doing an excellent job with the vision, field vision, and doing what he has to do to gain the yards. Got good blocking at the top of Mick Schoep and Roy Nichols on the play, leading it for Robert Smith. 1,006 yards have been compiled by Robert Smith in his freshman season here at Ohio State. Scotty Graham bulldozes for two. So the Buckeyes will run it on first down, have a second and eight from the 15 of Wisconsin. 35 seconds into the fourth quarter. Aaron Norvell, 48, made the tackle on the play. And the Buckeyes would like to really put some heat on Wisconsin with seven points at the end of this drive. A field goal would lift Ohio State's advantage from 14-10, 17-10. But a touchdown would require Wisconsin to get two scores to overtake Ohio State. Robert Smith popping to the outside, all the way to the end zone. Touchdown! Robert Smith charging to pay dirt and the Buckeyes lead Wisconsin 20 to 10, 13-49 left in this game. Robert Smith finding the open spots in the Wisconsin defensive line with uh, nice running today. He's been doing a good job of uh, using field vision and picking his spots and that time he found a spot on the left side and got into the end zone. Here is the point after by Williams. It would give Ohio State an 11 point cushion and he is on target. Ohio State leads the Badgers 21 to 10. Buckeye bench a little more relieved now on the sideline after posting its third touchdown of the afternoon. Smith, here's Scotty Graham getting a good block. Dan Beatty, 76, 30, 63, Roy Nichols, and then Smith hugging the sideline, sort of tiptoeing right down the edge and maintaining balance and not being knocked out of bounds, getting a, a lift a celebration from Bobby Allen. Ground level shot. Greg Fry, he stumbles coming out a little bit, but manages to get the hand off to Smith, who starts up inside, then bounces outside, shoved on the outside, but he maintains his ability to walk the tightrope and get into the end zone. Robert Smith scoring his sixth rushing, rushing touchdown of the year. Buckeyes now up after the point after, 21 to 10. It gives them a little bit of breathing room. The drive, three plays, 29 yards, a one minute, 11 seconds with Robert Smith capping it off with a 15-yard run. Now, it's not that cold here at Camp Randall today, is it, Paul? Well, he's a descendant of Davy Crockett, I guess, way up here on the border near Canada. <laughs> a little bit far north for Davy, but I think, but, or the descendant of Davy. But <laughs> There's Robert Smith, who was shaken up earlier in this game, hasn't shown signs of that first-half injury here in the second half, or I should say the third-quarter injury. No, he was shaken up in the second quarter, wasn't he? That's right. Slight uh, lower leg injury. Vincent from the nine gets up into the wedge and then is belted at the 25. Solid coverage downfield by Ohio State. Well, you might think that uh, Barry Alvarez on that uh, fourth and one play might be second guessing himself at this point, Jack. Uh, in a ball game in which Wisconsin is not certainly going anywhere this year, you pull out all stops in a game like this against Ohio State, and you don't know what might have happened, whether they would have gained the first down and gone on and put three or seven points on the board, but uh, they elected to punt and uh, play conservatively, and Ohio State has taken advantage of that. For the first time, the Buckeyes have put themselves in a position uh, where they've got some control in the ball game. Badgers have had a couple of fourth and ones today in which they've opted for punch. Sean Wilson still in at quarterback, and he is sandwiched right at the 25. Steve Tovar put the bear hug on him. 13 and a half minutes left in this game. Wisconsin down by 11. 
Boy, Tovar, who stands 6'4", is a mountain of a man. And he took Sean Wilson and stopped him right in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. After pumping, Wilson going long up the sideline. Inside the 40, the pass misses intended for Bill Williams. He had a step or two on the coverage. Well, Wilson, the backup passer on the play and uh, trying to hit Williams. They ran an out and up pattern. They got Benny Clark to bite on it. Ball thrown out there pretty good, but uh, Williams not the real burner in this offense. Just could not go out there and get the pass thrown. Tony Lowry, Jack on the bench, and so it looks like it's going to be Wilson from this point on in the ball game. Sean Wilson, the sophomore, on a sprint out. Tobar chasing him. Wilson spins ahead to about the 34, two yards short of a first down. Well, it may not have been a first down victory, but it was a victory of sorts for Wilson to, to escape the, the grasp. And we're looking at Lowry on the sidelines. He's sitting now and putting a jacket on him, but getting back to this play as Wilson starts his fake one way, starts to roll out and elects to run on this play. He does have a victory in that he gets by a big number 58. <laughs> he may have not made the first down, but he, he'll live. And Breck, he cannot get the punt away, and he's down back at the 29. That wasn't a fake. He was covered up. There was no way Brecky, who was blanketed, could punt that football, and he had to eat it. John Cooper racing out as a Buckeye is shaken up and down at the 31. Well, that's twice now, Paul, in two weeks. The Buckeyes defensively against the punt have come at the punter ferociously with all-out pressure. Well, they threatened it a couple of times. This time they go with it, and Brecky, as you said, Jack, doesn't have time to do much of anything. He just barely received the football. And so Brecky is taken down, and the Buckeyes have the ball in excellent field position. Buckeye down on the play, and he is being attended to by the Ohio State medical staff. She goes Nelson, it appears to me, the player who was injured and down on the field at this time. Nelson may have gotten shaken up trying to squeeze through the line of scrimmage to get at the punter. And Nelson, who plays with reckless abandon and has been an integral part of Ohio State special teams this year, is shaken up. Clock has stopped at 12.16 to go, fourth quarter. Ohio State in front of Wisconsin, 21-10. Well, the Buckeyes punt team has helped turn two games now in two weeks, Paul. Last week against Iowa, today here against the Badgers. Buckeyes have been very, very effective in rushing opposing punters and making things happen. Of course, the kicking game and special teams are very critical to the success of many football teams. Well, it appears as though it's an injury to the upper half of Chico Nelson's body. Hopefully not a head injury sustained by Chico, but we'll just have to wait and see as a hush has fallen over the Camp Randall Stadium crowd, which has witnessed a pretty good football game today. Buckeyes leading by just four until a few minutes ago. Now with a 21 to 10 lead, have possession inside the 30 of Wisconsin. And Nelson is up, still appears to be a little shaky on his feet. Well, 
Now Chico Nelson is about in the middle of the screen, right where they're making the attempt, and he's now at this point going to the surface. He was in tangled up with a Wisconsin blocker, but it was very difficult to see exactly how the uh, injury occurred, and apparently he was hit at the line of scrimmage when the play was initiated, when the snap of the ball was initiated. From inside the 30 of Wisconsin, a first and 10 for Ohio State. Robert Smith hopped to the line of scrimmage, and that's where he is stood up by Dan Batch. Second and 10 for the Buckeyes. Buckeyes have had trouble last few possessions getting significant yards on first down, but they've been able to bail themselves out on third down. Well, the total offense today, as you see, Ohio State decisive edge right there. Buckeyes have done it with the play-action passes that have held those linebackers in third-down situations. Harris and Smith are in the Ohio State backfield on second down and nearly 10. This is Raymond Harris bringing it to the outside. Drag down at the 21. Raymond Harris showing very little effect of the knee injury. Scott Nelson caught up with him after an eight-yard scoot. Wisconsin faking the blitz here on this play, but Ohio State interior line picks up everyone very well, creating an A lane for Raymond Harris to run to the outside. And Nelson has to come up from his safety position to make the stop on Raymond. Two yards shy of the first down. Here's Scotty Graham plowing to about the 17. He's got the first down. He picked up three or four, needing just two on the play. 10.48 to go in this game. And the Buckeyes could just about put this game away with a touchdown on the end of this drive. Lee Kruger made the last tackle for Wisconsin. Interesting statistic, Paul. <laughs> well, Robert Smith having a fine day, and uh, Wisconsin could use some of his yardage themselves. <laughs> Scotty Graham backpedaling to the 15. Buckeyes keeping the ball on the ground, using valuable clock time. Reggie Holt stacked up the play for Wisconsin. Second down and eight coming up for the Buckeyes. Ohio State quite deliberate at the moment. Exhausting most every second on the play clock. Jeff Graham and Olive are the receivers. Olive split out of your picture to the bottom of the screen. Here comes the blitz. Robert Smith trying to circle the end, but cuts it back, meets resistance, and is down just beyond the line of scrimmage. Dan Batch fenced in Smith, then got some help, and the Badgers stymie the play. Badgers come with the blitz and uh, shut off all the running lanes. Robert Smith simply doesn't have very much room to work in. And he stopped with no gain on the play. And the Buckeyes will come up with a third down and about eight and a half, almost nine yards. Buckeyes need eight yards. Check off right here. Closer to nine, actually, as you mentioned, Paul. It's a look into Olive, a nifty catch inside the five. He rolled into the end zone. It's marked down in the vicinity of the one. Troy Vincent on the tackle, number 22 for Wisconsin. Checkoff play, and Wisconsin coming with the all-out blitz. Greg Fry throwing a slant over the middle. Bobby Olive one-on-one. -on -one. He beats Vincent. Vincent trailing and grabbing him from behind. Olive tries to get into the end zone. He may have not been rolled to the ground, but the officials ruled that he was. That's out of stats coming into the ball game, but uh, Buckeyes have a first down. Goal to go, Buckeyes. 
Huffman in motion. This is Robert Smith, and he's over. Touchdown, Ohio State, which now owns a commanding 27-10 lead. As Robert Smith totes it into the end zone, and with 8.30 to go, the Buckeyes are on top of 17, and Williams' point after will try to extend it to 18. Well, Robert Smith gets into the end zone for his... Uh seventh touchdown rushing of the year, but the big play that was set up was Bobby Olive's uh, slant play over the middle, check off, all out blitz. Olive again coming through for the Buckeyes with a clutch reception and getting it down where the Buckeyes can take it in. Extra point try by Williams. And it is perfect, and Ohio State leads 28 to 10. Football win was the last time as we look at Robert Smith, that Bobby Olive dropped a pass. When was the last time a Buckeye receiver dropped a pass? Hard to remember, but this is the score by Robert Smith. Good blocking. He's running behind. Looks like Roy Nichols, 63, and he uh, knocks Roy into the end zone as well <laughs> as the, uh, uh, the defender from Wisconsin getting into uh, the end zone. Again, another look right there. Robert Smith trying to cut off that block that has to go right over him. Maintains his balance and gets into the end zone for the score. Buckeyes get the point after and uh, good block on the play by Nichols as he was on the fine linebacker Gary Casper leading the way for Robert Smith. Point after good and the Buckeyes are now up 28 to 10 and uh, Scoring drive, 29 yards, seven plays, three minutes, 46 seconds, and Robert Smith, one-yard plunge, second time in the end zone today, and getting back to Mr. Nichols, Bill Miles, associate <laughs> athletic director, has demonstrated to us on many, many occasions that, that kind of block is termed a pancake block because the <laughs> offensive lineman completely flattens the defensive player. In that case, Gary Casper of Wisconsin was flattened on the play to enable Robert Smith to get into the end zone. And Roy Nichols is the man you say who gets credit for the pancake. He gets credit for the pancake. 28 to 10 lead. The kick sails down inside the 20. Return back across the 30 to the 35. I want to give Bill, I said Bill Miles, associate athletic director, assistant athletic director. Melvin Tucker from the Buckeye State returned the kickoff for Wisconsin. And the Big Ten Conference schedule continues. Next week, it's the season finale. Wisconsin's at Michigan State. Purdue entertains Indiana. Iowa's at Minnesota. Michigan is in Columbus to take on the Buckeyes. Illinois is home to Northwestern. And be with us for all the exciting Ohio State-Michigan action from Ohio Stadium next weekend. Sean Wilson quarterbacking the Badgers. Deep drop, plenty of time. Buckeyes coverage is doing a job in the secondary. A completed pass at the 40. A flag flies in front of the Wisconsin bench. Well, Jack, I'm going to get Bill Miles' title right if it's the last thing. I do. He is the associate director of athletics. But anyway, he's the author of the pancake block. <laughs> we'll never forget that either. Hopefully the Buckeyes will make a few more pancakes next week against the Wolverines. All right, as we see quarterback right here, Wilson looking, maneuvering, trying to escape the rush, then firing the ball towards the left sideline. An incomplete pass right there. It was no catch, not in possession and control as he was going out of bounds. May have been an ineligible receiver downfield for Wisconsin, resulting in no completion, loss of down, second and 10 from the 35 for the Badgers. So the play is wiped out, and the Badgers lose the down. A roll out by Wilson. Wants to screen it to the right. That play's not there. In fact, the four or five plays that Wilson wanted to choose from were all gone as the Buckeyes blanketed 
That Wisconsin effort and will force a third and 13 from Wilson and Wisconsin. Tough situation for Wilson to come in with Wisconsin down and um, Ohio State in command of this ball game. You uh, just know that the Buckeye interior defensive linemen are really going after the passer. And so tough, pretty tough spot for Wilson to be in to try to make something happen throwing the football. Well, the Buckeyes have been able to pull away from the Badgers and give Alonzo Spellman time on the bench today. Spellman nursing an injury. Did not have to play in this game, so hopefully he'll be well healed for Michigan next week. 23 is Spaeth on the receiving end, and he is knocked down by Brian Cook. The 6'3", 190-pound Cook took care of the 5'8", 172-pound Spaeth. There's Brian, number 29. And Wisconsin's got to kick it away. Brian Cook has played exceptionally well as a nickel back in many situations for the Buckeyes all year long. I made a lot of things happen. A couple of interceptions. <laughs> Buckeyes appear to have a return on. Very high kick. Wobbly one for Graham. And he streaks right back up the middle into daylight. Wisconsin territory. Jeff Graham is on the loose. He's gone. Touchdown. Jeff Graham scooting that football back about 75 yards. He is being mobbed in the end zone by his Ohio State teammates. Buckeyes had the return play on. It was set up to perfection for Graham who executed it beautifully. Here's the PAT by Williams. Buckeyes try to extend the advantage to 35 to 10. And it is good. The kick by Williams is right down the middle. And the Buckeyes extend their lead to 35-10. Well, I said 75. I missed it by five plus one. It was 81 yards. Graham hauled it in, Paul, at the 19. Look at him go. Well, it's set up perfectly for him, and now he's just weaving through. He's got one man to beat, number 20, Brecky, the punter right there. And he uh, makes his effort, but Jeff's not even worried about that. He knew exactly what was behind him. He knew what was in front of him. And he just took it and went all the way with it. Well, special teams uh, coordinator Bob Pausick has to be very happy with what has happened out here today. Look at Jeff Graham weaving and finding the open spot, and now he's got one man to beat. And uh, that is the punter on the play. And he beats the punter, Brecky, and then he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. A big run. Of course, that breaks this ball game wide open for the Buckeyes. Jeff Graham being congratulated by his teammates as he comes up with another big play 81 yard punt return for a touchdown Jeff Graham has returned some big kicks for the Buckeyes over the past two seasons and he's always a threat when he's back in the deep spot back there Barry Alvarez now watching as this game has gotten out of hand Buckeyes up 35 to 10 as they prepare to kick off to Wisconsin. Williams to boot it. I believe that is Jeff Graham's third punt return for a touchdown in his career at Ohio State. I believe you're accurate, Jack. We'll, of course, check that. Garcia Lane had three. So I think Jeff Graham has tied Garcia Lane's mark of three punt returns for touchdowns in a career at Ohio State. Garcia Lane had two in one game, I think. Return is on from the four. And back to the 21 goes Tim Ware. There is a flag on the play. 7.05 to go in this game. Buckeyes well in command. Even the officials seem to be having a good time. <laughs> So 
the Badgers will be backed up inside their own, what, 10 perhaps. With 7.05 to go, Wisconsin trails by 25 points. I'm thinking that we should have stayed out And there. Barry Alvarez, Badgers, right gave the Buckeyes a good fight for three quarters or so, but it's been downhill in this fourth and final stanza for Wisconsin. Well, you, I guess you always have to go back and you can see the second guess, but uh, Barry had the fourth and one situation up near midfield and he elected to punt the football. That's a good point, Paul. It, mm, we questioned that at the time. I formation, draw action, Robinson carves out a couple, that's it. Brent Johnson on the tackle for Ohio State. Jim Peel helped. And there's Rome a Badger fan sitting uh, amongst the empty bleachers out there above the scoreboard. <laughs> and the crowd of uh, a little over 40,000 has dwindled now to maybe, oh, something like 20,000. This is Sean Wilson on the rollout, pitching a strike in the right flat. Good enough for a first down to wear who is then pushed back, the penalty marker is tossed. Well, the Buckeyes, who lost their first Big Ten game and tied their second, are on their way to running off their fifth victory in a row. Wilson on the roll to the right, dealing the ball to wear out in the sidelines where it really didn't have much room to go any place and a host of Buckeye tacklers come up and ride him out of bounds and apparently some way someone got their hand in his face mask Brutus Buckeye taking a knee as they say on the sideline and uh, cheering the Buckeyes on Wilson Throws it out of bounds up around the 35. Looked like the ball might have been caught, but out of bounds. Ware hauled it in, but he did not get a foot in. Jimmy Peel knocked him to the sideline. This ball sort of sails a little bit on Wilson as he throws kind of high. Ware going up, and he's popped right there at that point by Peel, but uh, he would not have made that reception. That's a tough call because it looked like maybe had Ware not been hit right above the boundary, he might have gotten a foot in. Well, he was in the air, and it was, it's a question of whether his momentum would have carried him beyond. That was point. close. Yeah, sure was. Second down pass play complete in the middle to Ware, or I should say Lionel Crawford, 13, not 15, and the play is good enough for a first down, an advance of 16. Harper and Cook make the hit for Ohio State. Deep drop by Wilson. Looking in the middle now. Flips it to the right hash. Complete again for nine. As Brian Cook nailed the receiver, Lionel Crawford. Clock running, 5.38 and counting. The Buckeye secondary playing it a little bit softer right now and Wisconsin having little success to run the football. Raphael Robinson. He's stacked up at about the 47. Brent Johnson got in his path at that point. Buckeyes lead 35 to 10, 5.21 to go in this game. Well, hopefully the Buckeyes have gotten that Wisconsin hex off their back. Buckeyes have lost five of the first seven in the decade of the 80s to the Badgers. But well on their way to win number three in a row over Wisconsin. Well, it's always been a tough place to play, certainly in the last several years up here. Boy, it sure has. Completed pass in the middle to the 40. Robinson snares it. Judah Herman smacked Robinson down. Third down coming up for the Badgers, or I should say second down coming up, and three needed for a first down. 4.50 left in this game. Oh, 
After a pump, Wilson going long to the end zone for Williams. Out of bounds, no good. Pretty good coverage applied along the sideline by Ohio State. Tim Walton and Jim Peel were back there stride for stride with Williams. Wilson on a good toss, but the Buckeye coverage, Paul, did not give Williams, the receiver, much room with which to work. Williams went down the sideline, just ran out of real estate. It was only one step out of bounds, really uh, made the catch. Actually, he got behind the defender, although um, the deep Buckeye back had to run a long way to get there. Almost made a big play. Sprint out by Wilson. He's going to keep it and spin for a couple yards. All depends on the mark of the football. I think he's a little short of first down yardage as we approach the four-minute mark in this fourth quarter. And we'll have a measurement. It's either going to be a first down or fourth and a foot. And if Wisconsin is short, Paul, here, I guarantee you, <laughs> Coach Barry Alvarez will not. He will not punt the football. Uh... I would like to thank you, wouldn't you? <laughs> Chain is stretched, and the Badgers have not made it. Fourth and inches. Well, what's Barry going to do? And the Wisconsin Partisans are yelling, go for it. <laughs> Fourth down. Wisconsin needs less than a foot. Buckeyes bunching up along the line of scrimmage. And Sean Wilson behind the center. Burrows for one yard and a first down at the 37. Quarterback sneak. Right straight ahead. Wisconsin trying to plow and give some room for Sean Wilson to make the necessary yardage for the first down, and they get it. This is Wilson behind Raphael Robinson. Wilson turns it upfield for about four yards. Meanwhile, the clock continues to run. 3.50 left in this fourth period. Uh, look like a um, broken play as Wilson turned and appeared to want to give that sprint out handoff to Robinson, but Robinson didn't want it. Eric Foster has played for Alonzo Spellman today, made the last tackle. Wilson throwing inside the 15. It's caught. Lionel Crawford lost control of the football, but two or three strides after he had snatched it and gone out of bounds. It's ruled a completed pass right on the 10. Lionel Crawford is running a flag pattern. He uh, runs it into double coverage but beats the coverage and uh, manages to hold on to the football. And Roger Harper is the fellow that knocked him out of bounds but the Badgers are right on the 10-yard line and a first down. Raphael Robinson is upset at the nine. 3.20 left fourth quarter. Buckeyes lead 35-0. Or I should say 35-10. to 10. <laughs> That scoreboard down at the other end registers a big zero. <laughs> Come on, Buckeyes! <laughs> Wisconsin partisans wouldn't like that yet. No, it's tough to take points off the board. <laughs> oh, good pressure. Wilson is sacked back outside the 20. Jay Cook, 82, smothers the quarterback. Huge tackle for a loss by Cook. Well, Sean Wilson has to remember that just because the Buckeyes are playing prevent, that doesn't mean they won't blitz occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> this time they do, and it's a real surprise. As Judah Herman and along with Jay Cook right in Wilson's face before he can turn around and take a look at what's downfield, and they've thrown him for a big loss. Timeout called by on the field and uh, gives the Badgers and the Buckeyes an opportunity to uh, talk over some strategy. Well, the Buckeyes will enter next week's play against Michigan 
with the loss and a tie in the Big Ten Conference. The Wolverines with just two setbacks, a half a game separating the two. Well, it's an important ball game, obviously. Uh, things are still not completely settled here in the Big Ten with regard nope. to conference champion and so forth, and it will go down into the final week. And so uh, the Michigan ball game coming up next week will be uh, as big as it always is. And I'm hoping, Paul, that uh, the Buckeyes, who'd not lost a fumble in four weeks, but which lost a few today, have gotten those turnovers out of their system and will play near-perfect football against the Wolverines. Buckeyes not as sharp as they would have liked today, and uh, perhaps this was the tune-up they needed. Well, these are the tough ball games to win, as we mentioned at the start of the game, against the teams that you should be. Pass intended for Tim Ware outside the 10-yard line. Walton put the hit on him. Ware could not manage to bring it down. 2.39 left, clock stop. But as you said, as we're looking at uh, Sean Wilson on the sidelines, a couple of instructions before returning to the lineup and play before Wilson attempting to throw the ball to Crawford. The ball sailed a little bit high. Crawford went up for it, but couldn't find the handle. Fourth down pass play headed for the end zone. It is intercepted nine yards deep. And it's caught by 18 Walton, who makes the intercept. The ball will come out to the 21st and 10 Ohio State on the touchback. Sean Wilson threw that one up for grabs. Yeah, he certainly did. I don't know if he was trying to complete that one because uh, he was trying to hit uh, Tony Spaeth on that play, and he's 5'8". He could. <laughs> uh, Tony Spaeth is not the kind of guy that you, you throw it up and you look for the great vertical jump, but uh, he's just putting it up for grabs pretty much at this point, and Walton back there playing deep goes up high in front of Spade makes the interception and kills that drive Buckeyes have inserted Kent Graham into the game at quarterback and 42 lugging the pigskin out across the 25 is William Houston Kent Graham at quarterback William Houston in at full of course Graham the transfer from Notre Dame Kent Graham's last appearance was a good one he threw the ball very well in a substitute role the last time he was on the field for the Buckeyes, playing behind Fry. Two minutes left in this contest. Tyrone Harrison has checked in now for Ohio State at fullback. This is Butler Benote scampering out across the 35 to the 36. A minute 50 and counting. Buckeyes 35, Badgers 10. Benote takes this handoff and uh, watch that little skip action right there as he finds the open spot. Like all good running backs, they'll find an opening and get into it and make positive yardage. Good quick feet and good initial quick start by Butler Benote. First down and 10 for Ohio State. Under a minute and a half left. Strong tackle applied at the 39 on Harrison. Good hit by Dewar Sharp, 36 of Wisconsin, as he dropped Harrison. We noticed that Mike Huddleston and Jack Thrush are in for Ohio State along the line of scrimmage at guard and center, respectively. Down to a minute left in the fourth quarter. Buckeyes 35, Badgers 10. Fans here at Camp Randall Stadium filing out it was a tight game for three quarters. Butler Benote streaks into the secondary into Wisconsin territory at the 47. Well, the turnovers kept the Badgers in the game, Paul. Eventually, though, Ohio State's talent just too much for Wisconsin. Butler Benote again running to the left side of the line, finding an opening. Good blocking. Huddleston 71 gets a block stable line downfield number 80 and also helping out on the play. It's a fine run by Benote. 
This is Harrison, outside left tackle, plowing for three. And that could very well be the final play of this game. As, in fact, the bench is empty and the two teams head out onto the field. Clock will wind down, and that is it here at Camp Randall Stadium on the campus of the University of Wisconsin where the Buckeyes have thumped Wisconsin to up their Big Ten mark to five wins, a loss, and a tie as Ohio State head coach Sean Cooper and Barry Alvarez, the mentor of Wisconsin, shake hands at midfield. So for Paul Warfield, this is Jack Kramer saying so long from Camp Randall Stadium where the Buckeyes have downed Wisconsin 35-10. to 10.